Today's video is sponsored by Square Enix and Octopath Traveler, Champions of the Continent. From Team Asano, the prequel to the critically acclaimed RPG Octopath Traveler arrives to iOS and Android devices. A new story unfolds in the world of Orstera. Enjoy high-quality graphics, engaging combat, and storytelling akin to the console experience Octopath Traveler fans expect but optimized for your mobile device. Previous experience with the Octopath Traveler games is not required. This is a standalone title that fans new and old will enjoy. As their own fun tie-in for all this, Viva La Dirt League has been creating Octopath and RPG-based sketches. Here's a clip from their latest. Stop following me! I really love this sort of thing. It reminds me of kind of an older day on YouTube when people more commonly made this sort of content. I'll definitely link below to their full video and highly recommend you guys go check it out. They have some awesome stuff over there. And don't forget to download and check out Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent. It's totally free, it just dropped on the App Store and Google Play, you guys are gonna love it. My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs, and a return to the Finding the References series. Specifically looking at the references I missed in those first videos ranging from breaking the bank through to fleeing the complex. As I put out those original videos, you all were able to help me out, pointing out things I missed. I'm excited I was able to recognize as many of the references as I did by myself, but I have some very specific blind spots, largely when it comes to AAA and first-person shooter games. So I really needed assistance in identifying any of those references, so thank you all for your help throughout. And now we get to have it out in time for the two-year anniversary of the Henry Stickman Collection. That felt like a great opportunity to celebrate, and finally bring this series to a close. I'll go through them in the same order I did those original videos, and only include references I didn't originally include in that series. There are a lot. This video has been very intimidating to put together. <laughs> So thank you to Fruz for helping out with the final edit. I first connected with them over on my Discord server, and I'm very happy to have an editor helping out with this, otherwise I may never have done it. I'll have a link to Fruz's own channel down in the description. You can check out some of their awesome, snappily edited music videos featuring some of their fantastic artwork. I'm going to present these with a tiny bit less context than I normally would, since I'm kind of filling in the missed details rather than giving the full complete picture. And the idea is that I can then cut this together, cut all the videos together, and have one video with all the references. So doing it this way is going to make it much easier for myself to achieve that. There's not much missed in Breaking the Bank, which makes sense, it's not a very long game, so I just have this one to share. It was pointed out that these two guards' first and only interaction added in the remake largely parrots how the Rooster Tooth series Red vs. Blue begins. Hey. Yeah? You ever wonder why we're here? <laughs> you ever wonder why there's a bank out here? And there were a couple missed from escaping the prison, not just the one this time. In the penitentiary's mission statement, be vigilant, be creative, and shoot to kill may be an abstract version of one of TF2's sniper quotes. Be polite. Be efficient. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet. I'd almost assume it's a coincidence if it wasn't for the 300 other TF2 references throughout this series. And this little logo in the corner of that same mission statement looks like Puff turned the Black Mesa logo into a little smiley face. Less of a reference, but still a great joke, everyone other than the captain in this room is named some variation of John. John Farn, John Gritz, John Saskatchewan, Jen Brun, and John Barley. Something else I left out of that escaping the prison portion of the video was Henry's use of the opacitator. The original Flash version includes a song from the soundtrack of Neverhood. That didn't really seem worth mentioning, since there's a lot of copyrighted tracks that had to be taken out for the remastered release. But 
turns out there's more to this reference than I realized. It's a bit of an homage to the same first person perspective that the character in Neverhood has with this note. And that would be why that soundtrack was also used during that scene. So even though the musical tie-in is lost, we still have that small visual reference. If we were to look at the remastered version in a vacuum, I'd say there's no way that's obvious enough to count as a reference. But when looking at the whole, yeah, I totally buy into that. Episode 2, Stealing the Diamond. The penny or coin that you can toss is a reference to a distraction technique seen in the Hitman series. This stick fellow with the big handsome beard is probably meant to be Charles Darwin. This portrait of a red-faced character is a bit of an inside joke of Puffs. It is his Oblivion character, Gilnar the Great. He had a series of vines showing off zoom-ins of these characters, dubbed over with silly music tracks. In Puff's own words, I made myself cry laughing when I made each of these because of how stupid it is. The look Henry gives after the failed use of the gun is the poker face meme, while the stance at the end of Just Plain Epic is likely meant to feel like the F yeah meme. The shell in the retro room in the original version of the game is likely meant to be a Bowser shell from Double Dash, not an immediately recognizable Mario shell. This was changed in the remastered version to the much more iconic blue shell. Strange that this one persisted through the copyright updates. Also from the Flash version, in the retro room we have a No You Luigi portrait. Both the quote, No You and image of Luigi pointing come from the animated Hotel Mario cutscenes. Many people have said that the worm during the shrink ray does Dio's re from Heritage for the Future. It was re-recorded to be a unique Puff original version of that Rai cry. <laughs> While stealthing our way out and launching ourselves with a plank, there is a soft and silent landing in a box of hay. Odds are that is actually an Assassin's Creed reference. Starting with the Flash version and then looking at the remaster, the lol what pear became the lol how apple. In looking for the origins of this, it appears that Roblox did a whole lol series of hats and items, with none of them being the original lol what pear. So there's a, a possible connection there. We appear to have several of the cars from Breaking the Bank parked in front of the museum. Either this is just the reusing of assets, a coincidence because that's how Puff draws cars, but maybe one of them is meant to belong to a character that carries forward, like Ted McAdams. In one of the rare instances where a reference was actually added during one of these selections instead of taken away, Tow Cable has received a very specific update. It appeared to just be a claw-like grip before, but has now been made more suction-like, considering the ending of Sonic 3 where Sonic and Tails tow a similarly shaped emerald behind their plane, it's likely the new Tow Cable was updated to look more like theirs. I have no firm confirmation on what this bull statue is, it always felt rather generic, tipping into the possibility of being a reference to anything. When I asked Puff directly about it, he doesn't even remember, so I think it's just a generic statue. If anything, just to throw it out there, it most likely seems to be the brown bull of Cooley. NCC is a recurring news network in the Stickman series, which is a riff on CNN. See what they did there? Just kind of a flipping around of things. I guess we could try and come up with what this new acronym means, but it's just kind of meant to be the opposite. Next, we can move up to Episode 3, Infiltrating the Airship. As these games get bigger, the amount of missed references is really gonna escalate as well. There's just so much to cover. When using missile against the helicopter, we miss entirely. But upon retaliation, the helicopter gets a crit on the airship. This is based on critical hits in Team Fortress 2. The Flash version even used the associated sound effect. This has been confirmed by Puff himself. Return fire! As a general, leet speak reference, right hand man deals 1337 damage. Leet 
In the Gaben ending, a repeating sound bug is common in Source Online games, the engine Valve uses to make their own games. Gabe Newell is the president of Valve, and his common and affectionate nickname with fans is Gaben. It's a little bit more of like a, a meta reference, I guess. Natebox may also be a reference to the popular Team Fortress 2 YouTuber Nate Fox. Although the bio specifically mentions close quarters combat, and I'm not sure if that's meant to tie in in some deeper way, like a running joke on their channel, as that CQC is typically more of a Metal Gear thing. When using the cannonball thrusters, one of them is shot, causing it to boost at full throttle. This is how shooting thrusters works in Gary's Mod. The way Captain G yells out Henry's name may be a reference to Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Henry! Khan! Sledge McRush is likely a reference to the Sledge character in Rainbow Six Siege, whose playstyle is rushing based. From the fail text after Henry uses the throwing star, how could you miss? He was three feet in front of you, is a quote from Mushu in Mulan. You missed! How could you miss? He was three feet in front of you! The jingle that plays when Henry lands the glider comes from Pilot Wing 64. Cannonball hit the target. <laughs> For the remaster, Puff made his own version of that track. Barnyard Blitz is also the name of a Team Fortress 2 payload map. We know how big of a TF2 fan Puff is, so that's the most likely angle he was going for there. Keygit references what is now a pretty common video game trope, but one that I'm fairly certain originated with Shine Git in Super Mario Sunshine back in 2002. In the Japanese version of that game, there's this awkward bit of translated English of Shine Git. In the English version, that was fixed by simply showing Shine, but this version was shared around enough to really become its own thing. Apparently, Puff confirmed in a Twitch stream that Charles' last name came from his Discord. In the original Flash version, he would have never had a last name stated. Someone used Charles Calvin in a sort of fanfic, and Puff chose to run with that. This giant, vaporizing blast is likely a reference to the single-player mode Subspace Emissary in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Harry Butts is a silly joke of a name, but could be a twist on Larry Butts from the Ace Attorney series. This is made all the more likely by some characters in that game joking with Larry Butts, calling him Harry Butts. The way the backpack claw attacks Henry is a recreation of an idol animation from Banjo-Kazooie. It's also a relatively common way that Kazooie messes with Banjo across the series, doing so in various cutscenes, things like that. I covered most things in this room before, but I did get stuck on a few. This red, fez-like hat looks like something you'd see on a Christmas Nutcracker or an Ottoman soldier, but it is a specific reference. This is meant to be the Stout Shako, a soldier hat in TF2. And this purple jacket is from Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. So we have two different cosmetic items from two first-person shooters. Between the golden gun from 007 GoldenEye, yes, I know the gun originates from the movie, but this is very clearly like a video game-centered room. An 1887 sawed-off shotgun from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And while you'll see sawed-off shotguns in all sorts of games, movies, and media, Modern Warfare 2 was confirmed by Puff. And the Elite Energy Sword from Halo. So the running joke here in this lineup is wildly overpowered weapons in their respective franchises. Making this random photo lab guy's name Alcohol, a bit of wordplay on alcohol, may feel out of place, but alcohols can be a common way of processing photos. How educational. When Henry uses tools, he busts out a chainsaw. 
This is actually a weapon first used by Edgar in Final Fantasy VI. He even briefly dons the old school goalie mask, which would have also been worn by Edgar. The Blitz command and resulting suplex also come from Final Fantasy VI, and the achievement earned by working your way through this section includes a pun on the character Locke. They are from Final Fantasy VI. It, it, it's really starting to seem like maybe that's Puff's favorite Final Fantasy game. The way Henry gets cornered sharing a lane with this pending bomb is straight from Bomberman. The fail text suggests that you should have used the remote bombs instead. This is a possible upgrade throughout the series that would allow you to safely detonate once out of harm's way. In a rare instance of referencing a real life event, the last mention of outrunning bullets is a play on the planned Area 51 raid Facebook event. While characters from the Naruto series can dodge bullets, this highly specific phrasing is very likely pulled from that meme of an event. During this massive chaotic battle, we have a Team Fortress 2 spy backstabbing a sniper. In the Flash version, you could quietly hear the domination sound effect straight from that game. This sound would play when someone gets killed by the same player four times in a row without them getting a kill against you. It is entirely absent from the remaster. <laughs> Moving on to the missed references from fleeing the complex. It's only fitting that this is where things begin to up in complexity and it's where I missed most references. When Reginald receives a phone call, we hear a rather familiar song. Yes, hello. Back in the original Flash version of escaping the prison during the badass bust out route, it played the Castle Crashers menu loop from Corn and Beans. In the remaster, this was replaced with an original song from Puffballs titled Gangsta for Life. So that ringtone heard in the Flash version of Fleeing the Complex actually came first, then being updated again in the full release. Yes, hello. I'll now play all of those songs in the order they were introduced, not the order you experience them in the collection. The character name Ryan Halberd is possibly a mashup of Jim Halpert and Ryan Howard, both from The Office. That one's a bit of a stretch, it's right on the line for me. The rocket fail, alongside the gag of using a car engine startup sound effect, which I still find hilarious. <laughs> is a direct Kerbal Space Program reference. As you build your rockets in that game, it is easy to get the staging process out of order, resulting in a failed launch. Here, the parachute and engine activate at the same time, and by the time the thruster engages, it immediately crashes. Everything is, you know, a little bit out of order. We know this is for sure a reference, as Puffballs is 100% a Kerbal fan, known from his animation, Munar 1. While the character name Heath Stone is an obvious Hearthstone reference, we also have the interesting connection of the Stone family from infiltrating the airship. That poor, poor family, Heath is left to carry on the legacy, although I am reading into it, there is no confirmed family relation there. When Ellie and Henry are working together, the way she backward tosses Henry is very likely a reference to the behemoth game Battle Block Theater, a game that's very popular in its own right, but especially among the Newgrounds crowd, as it was made by Tom Fulp, the creator of Newgrounds. 
so it makes sense why Puff would want to pay tribute to that. That game is equal parts competition and cooperation, which kind of makes sense for where Ellie and Henry are on their journey together. The quick waggling side to side move Henry does right before executing the knee adds one more layer to what is already a Super Smash Bros. reference. This move is called Dash Dancing and is useful both as an evasive maneuver and for advanced comboing. When Henry is pickpocketing the guard, he literally takes the shoes right off his feet. I hate the look of his toes so much. Seriously, what is it with feet in this complex? Ugh. When Ellie tasers Henry's grenade, we get this extra large explosion. It is possible that this is a nod to Minecraft, with electrified creepers making extra large explosions. As you would expect? Pretty sure that's how bombs work. It's been suggested that the taser and sniper combo could come from Payday, as a mechanic in that game that comes about when the player is tased results in you firing around in random directions. I did end up asking Puff about that specifically, and he said it was an independent concept that he came up with on his own, not knowing the connection to Payday. So, simply a coincidence on that one. When we have the two choices of calls to make, if you advanced through this game having specifically only done the pure-blooded thief route in infiltrating the airship, neither option is available, because on that route, Henry makes no friends or connections. So you're actually unable to advance the game until you go back and unlock one of the necessary endings. While I originally thought this one was a typo, Can You Even Shot Web is intentional and a play on the How Do I Shot Web Spider-Man meme. Even if Henry didn't have metal clamps on his hands, with his limited fingers, I'm not sure he can do the proper Spider-Man web slinging hand position. It's also possible that the way Henry faceplants could be a small nod to the way Spider-Man faceplants when failing a quick time event in the old PlayStation 2 movie tie-in Spider-Man game. The Gadget Gabe Shadozer note says, The unseen stick is the deadliest. This is a quote from the League of Legends character Zed, the Master of Shadows. The unseen blade is the deadliest. Looking at the international rescue operative or betrayed route, there is a theory that the crushed guard scene may be Kyle Baxter, who we had seen cowering during the convict ally pathway. The main reason being the similar shoe colors. It's about all we have to go off of otherwise for this unnamed guard. So I think that's kind of a fun way to tie them together. When these elevator doors open, we have two characters with an orange beard and a brown goatee. It's been suggested that they may be stand-ins for Honeydew and Zephos from Yogg's Cast. Charles's Sniper is an AWP from Counter-Strike. The original Flash version even used that exact sound. Got him. And while we're talking guns, guards in both the charge tackle scene and at the helicopter landing pad are using the Counter-Strike Go Galil AR. Thank you to dedicated and observant fans for pointing those out because I j just know nothing about guns. With our mini helicopter, it's possible that this comes from Sly Cooper, who has also used mini helicopters as a stealth gadget. And more precisely, an RC-style chopper was first seen in Sly 2, but more specifically was capable of dispatching guards in Sly 3. One of the Flash game achievements, Golden Boy, may be a reference to the Golden God achievement in the original Binding of Isaac earned for 100%ing the game. That achievement still exists in the Rebirth remake, but its criteria to be earned has changed. Henry being betrayed and thrown from a height to fall to his doom plays out almost identically to Scar's betrayal of Mufasa in The Lion King. I'm deeply regretful that I managed to miss that one. If you remained on this fail screen, the Flash version of Freddy Fazbear could end up continually jump-scaring the player. It may feel like some inescapable horror that was placed intentionally, but it has been confirmed that it was simply a bug. 
The achievement for finding Freddy Fazbear is titled Spooked and mentions being 100 Haunted. This is taken from Video Game Donkey's video on Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, this game is actually 100 Haunted at the minimum. When Friedrich shouts out his German lines, it has been confirmed by Puff that he is really just stringing together near random German words. Warum ist die Pferd zu klein? Was? They translate to, why is a horse too small? And again, when he supposedly shouts, hey stop, Nein, wow. he is instead yelling, no stomach. Frosty the snowman being held captive is already funny to me, but it's even better to think that this snowman might be a Top Hat member. It makes you wonder what comes first, the physical Top Hat or your membership in the Top Bats. Because if it's Hat first, then acquiring membership is outstandingly easy. <laughs> this inclusion is also a self-reference to an old animation of Puff's Snowman's Gift, where Santa shoots Frosty. We have since had a backstory on the distraction dance. It is something Puff used to do to his roommates to annoy them while playing ping pong. This has been directly confirmed by him a few times. So that massive meme very much started as this small inside joke, and now all of a sudden it's in Fortnite. The meteoric rise of Henry Stickman in pop culture is something I'll never get over. And the general idea of someone starting a dance and enemies joining in has been a Team Fortress staple ever since the Russian dance taunt release. Servers would just fill up with nothing but dancing players. And considering Puff's long history with that series, I'm gonna go ahead and say that was intended. It has been confirmed that the AEIOU Moonbase Alpha reference in the Plunger Boots fail is only present because Puff wanted it in the game and couldn't think of anywhere to put it. So the boots themselves are very much a Banjo-Kazooie reference only, and the Moonbase Alpha thing is slipped in there just for the heck of it. I had mistakenly said that the announcer's perfect came from Street Fighter. Perfect. That is incorrect. The version of it that Puff was going for is intended to be from Tekken. Perfect. The moment of these wall characters trading hats feels maybe just like a throwaway gag, giving these characters something to do and talk about before we join in mid-conversation, but it could also be a reference to hat trading in Team Fortress 2, which is a really funny idea to take such a meta element of that game and turn it into some literal conversation these characters are having. The original elevator sequence used a new ground song, Jazz in 3-4 by Karmus81. This was replaced by Puff's own arrangement of the classic song The Thieving Magpie. In L.A. Noir, you work as the detective Cole Phelps. Here, this character is Colby Phelps. In that game, when someone tells you a story, you can say it was the truth, you can accuse them of lying, or you can simply doubt. This doubt response kind of became a meme in its own right, but here it's referencing the game, not so much the meme. An interesting thing with the piano cue used. Oh yeah, we transferred from the eighth floor is that this would indicate that you have incorrectly doubted their statement. You're rotten. This is the sound of the jingle when you get it right. Did you take any money? Wasn't any to take. So either Puff intentionally used the quote negative jingle, because from our perspective, we're now caught. It didn't work out for us. But from Colby Phelps' perspective, he was right to doubt us. So Puff either intentionally switched those around, or, you know, it's just a, a genuine little bit of a slip up there. Trying to give the, uh, the benefit of the doubt. When Henry sneaks along the dock, and we get the quick question mark alert, it's obviously a reference to Metal Gear Solid, but the additional line, Just a box is also a direct quote from that series. Just a box. Puff actually said on his own commentary playthrough stream of these games that both the stealth box 
and Five Nights at Freddy's are the only two references he did to games he hadn't actually played. The clickable Gary Mans hidden throughout the complex are actually spread out, such that there is one per available route. Finding all five earns an achievement that carries on this reference. Rise and Shine and Wake Up and Smell the Ashes are two direct quotes from G-Man, slightly reworked to better suit the setting of the wall. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Henry dressing up as a snowman to attempt his escape could be a reference to Red vs. Blue Season 12, Episode 8. For your own reference, it's uh, 3 minutes and 18 seconds in. Where they all choose to hide in snowman suits. In the original Flash version, if you watch the entirety of any of the credit sequences, you will earn Credit 2 Team, with the face of Team Fortress 2's Heavy. Engineer is Credit 2 Team is something that Heavy will occasionally yell when taking a teleporter. Engineer is Credit 2 Team! This phrase has since taken on a meme quality of its own and was reworked as a reference here. The Heavy-like character is named Misha Sashova. Misha is the canonic name of the Heavy in Team Fortress 2, while Sashova is a riff on what he has named his own minigun, with Misha affectionately referring to that as Sasha. So this was lengthened out to make a Russian-sounding last name. Quite a few people pointed out that Dan the Man could be a reference to a mobile game with that exact title. It came up enough times that I reached out to ask Puff about that one directly, whether it was an intended connection. He had never heard of the mobile game and did confirm that Dan the Man comes from JoJo. There's a fun through line of Henry being an earthbender in this sequence, as that technically carries forward from the fact that we saw him metal bend in infiltrating the airship. So there's actually a consistent bit of continuity there of what bending art Henry has mastered. During the Major League gaming sequence, there is so much going on here. It's purposely as chaotic as possible, layering together, screaming and yelling. With that portion of the audio being taken from the famous Wombo Combo video, oh, 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 oh! we can also hear the Oh Baby A Triple meme soundbite that came about back in 2010 as a part of a Call of Duty Modern Warfare clip that was uploaded to YouTube. Oh Baby A Triple! Oh yeah! The gun used here is the Chaytac M200 Intervention, which was sort of the go-to no-scoping gun in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The original Flash version even directly used that sound effect. I have to laugh at the dumb gag of the purposely poorly written text having Fight Me 9? It's just a stupid gag and I love it. The achievement icon here is dressed up like the Thug Life meme, or possibly even just the deal with it sunglasses, and loud sounds is making fun of the Major League Gaming editing trope of blaring as many sound effects as possible as loud as possible, as was just seen in that segment. Can you believe that these games are so reference dense that simply looking at references missed within a handful of the episodes manages to span half an hour? I had picked up working on this video multiple times and just got overwhelmed. So thank you again to Fruz for taking on the editing. It was a crazy amount of work to put together. I appreciate everyone's patience. I won't make you wait that long again. The missed references from completing the mission will be coming in about one week, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent. There's links at the top of the description and a pinned comment. It's very well made, a ton of fun, and you check Checking it out directly supports the channel. Thank you to my patrons for their continued support, and I'll see you all again soon.